because we'll do that item first so that they can then um, go and do other things. Um, and obviously any media or public that want to come back in can do so as well. All right, so this is item 14, Christchurch City Holdings' final statement of intent. They are... Yeah, all right. Let's do CCHL first. So we'll do item 14 next, and then we'll move to item 13. All right. So given that this one is just receiving the statement of intent, um, my intention is to chair this. But if it becomes, if anything becomes contentious, I'll be the first one, Sam, to be asking you to jump into the chair. And Ian, that, um, that's the advice that I've received. Yeah. Okay, so um, this, I'm just going to set the scene. For, this is for both the next two reports, so both uh, reports for CCHL and the other CCOs. So the following two council reports are to receive the final statements of intent for 21 and 22 that have been adopted by the CCO boards. The staff have reviewed the final statement of intents and have commented on any significant changes to the drafts that the council received in March and reflects on the feedback provided to the CCOs on the drafts and whether there is anything missing requirements under the Local Government Act 2002, of which we can confirm there is not. We have asked Christchurch City Holdings, Christchurch NZ and Venues Atatahi to attend today in case the councillors have any questions on the final statement of intents and give them an opportunity to provide any information they wish to do so in, their, in regards to their final statement of intents. But again, noting at this stage, and based on our review, this is not an opportunity for the council to request changes to the final and now current statement of intent. In the next two months, we will commence work for the council's letter of expectations for FY23, and it is through that mechanism that the councillors will have an opportunity to provide direction to their CCOs to ensure alignment with the council's strategic outcomes. So, on that, so I've got the CCHL team with me here. Just a couple of things from the staff point of view before we hand over to CCHL and the council. Um, the improvement on the financial forecasts of the subsidiaries uh, is very positive, given the current ongoing challenges of the COVID environment. This is also reflected in the increase in forecast dividends to CCHL, which is great. As noted in the report, whilst the CCHL final statement of intent has not increased its dividend forecast to Council from the draft, CCHL are committed to work closely with Council staff over the next couple of months to review the dividend forecasts, taking into account the continuing impact of COVID on the subs, potential distributions from property sales and debt borrowing requirements of both Council and CCHL. There were two other key areas that in the feedback letter that Council um, gave to CCHL and they have been addressed in the letter that has been received, uh, the first being in regards to living wage. Uh, in regards to the questions raised in the feedback letter to CCHL, uh, CCHL advises that it will work with its subsidiaries over the next three to six months to understand the potential implications on the group of implementing the living wage within the 12, next 12 months for all direct employees and within the tw next 24 months for all contractors and provide feedback to the Council on the outcome of this work. Noting that that feedback only went to CCHL late May, I think it was, early uh, June. Mm -hmm. Uh, in regards to the senior remuneration, executive remuneration, CCHL subsidiaries have been asked to show and to annually report on a narrowing of the gap between the highest and lowest remuneration levels. On that note, I'll um, hand over to this team and to the Council if they've got any further questions for CCHL or whether, Paul, you've got anything you want to add. Thank you, Sue. No, nothing I can add to that summary. Um, you sit there. Uh, I think Leah's, Leah's given you a good overview of... Um, the updates that we've made between the draft and the final SOI, I don't need to repeat any of that. Um, Claire, unless there's anything that you wanted to add from a board point of view? Um, no, I think, we'll I think, I think this word thing is well covered. Yeah, I think we'll just be telling you what's in the reports that I'm sure you've all read, so I'm happy to open it up for questions. All right, great. So questions for the CCHL team, Pauline and then Tim. It okay, so Pauline. Thank you. Just on the living wage there, so is, is that the correct time frame that, that CCHL received the instruction from Council regarding those uh, <coughs> desires around the living wage was May this year? I thought, it, I thought we'd given that. that. That was when the feedback, that was when we discussed, that was when we discussed the draft statement of intent. 
and it was the feedback from that draft statement of intent meeting when, we, when you received the draft statement of intent and gave us comments on it, that was when that feedback was, uh, was tabled. So when does the clock start then on that 24 months for indirect employees then? Well, May it, or now? Still a long way away, isn't it? it that is in regard to 24 months is for contractors. Yes, I know. Now, um, you need to remember that that was only web, CCHR have never been asked to do that for contractors. Mm. So this was the first time that they've been asked to do that and what we need to do what we all need to do, we need to do the work and then work it through yeah. with you guys so we understand what the implications are. As Leah said, we hadn't been asked directly to do that for contractors before and we now need to take some time to work with the subsidiaries because it's quite complex and we need to work with them to understand what the implications of that request are and that's mm. what we, we are doing. Mm. Yeah, I do understand that it is complicated and there are implications but we have been uh, asking for this for years now. It just seems to me it's such a, a crawled pace. But you know, anything you can do to speed it up would be really um, gratefully Understood. accepted. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. Any further questions? No further questions. So, Tim, you've indicated that you'd like to move this. Is there a seconder? Sam, any discussion? Jan? Yeah, I mean, I just want to concur with the comments that Councillor Collar has made. I just. It always feels like the big wait. We just it just seems to take so long. Um, so you know anything that can be done to speed up that process. My, my my understanding of what's happening around New Zealand is that contractors are now being paid the living wage. There's been a real movement in the last um, few years to actually get the cleaners and the contracted security and whoever um, to be paid a living wage now compared to when we first started raising this with CCHL. So. You know, I, I would hope we can find a, a positive way forward, um, but it just does need to be addressed as a priority. So, and I think you've you've heard that feedback. So, yeah, um, I, I, you know, we're just receiving these, so we we can't really comment um, too much on on any changes that we might require. I think the other thing is, I note in here that CCHL has asked its companies to report on the gap between the lowest paid and the highest paid, and that's welcome. I, I do think we still need really clear targets around senior executive remuneration um, and we need to be really transparent in that space as well so I think you've acknowledged in the um, letter back that that is going to there's going to be some work done on that too so I appreciate that thank you all those in favor say aye, aye. aye. against that's carried thank you very much indeed thank you thank you so now moving back to item 13.